teach you how to prepare and run a column in column chromatography. These are the essential tools and apparatus required to do column chromatography. The glass column and a clip ring. It is green here. It can also be blue, but most importantly, the size must be correct. An air pump to speed up the rate of elution. Test tubes and test tubes racks to collect your sample fractions. A rubber tubing, a glass pipette, a column 1, and a solid funnel. You will also need sand, silica gel, cotton wool, a beaker, and a glass rod. This is how you would connect your pump to the column later on. Insert it at the mouth and secure it with the clip ring. Now, show time. Pinch a small piece of cotton wool and roll it up. And use the column 1 to secure it near the stop cock. Do not use a huge piece of cotton wool. And also do not make it too tight as these two factors contribute to the slow flow rate. Now secure the column onto the retort stand. And transfer sand through a solid funnel. At all times, the column must be vertical. Make sure the sand layer is level. Take two spoonful of silica gel, place it into the beaker. Always caps on the chemicals immediately after use. Add hexane slowly into the beaker to make the slurry. With the glass rod, stir it well to evacuate any air bubbles trapped inside. Make it into a homogeneous slurry. We use the solid funnel for the column so that we can transfer the slurry as well. Okay, add about 5 ml of the hexane into the column. At all times, the sash must be closed. This is to prevent the breathing in of the toxic silica gel into our lungs. You may get silicosis, which is very harmful to our body. So take note, sash must be down. Here in the video, we're just doing a demonstration, so it's up. Open the stop cock for a short while to check that it works. And then now transfer the slurry of silica gel into the column. Be calm and stoic. Don't do it too fast as air bubbles may be trapped. Open the stop cock to allow the silica to settle. Rinse the beaker with hexane and transfer the remainder into the column. Take some additional hexane to rinse the inner wall of the column. Open the stop cock to allow the silica to settle.
take some additional hexane to rinse the inner walls of the column. At all times, the column must be vertical. Use the rubber tubing to tap on the column so that the silica settles even better. Connect the air pump and secure the joints using the clip ring. Check out the flow rate. It's much faster. Keep your eyes on the meniscus of the eluent and never let the column turn dry. The solvent must always be above the silica gel. Notice how fast it is with the pump. When the meniscus is reaching the silica, remove the clip and use your hand to hold the joints to have a better control. Use the pump to push the layer down. Take some additional hexane to rinse the inner walls of the column. And there are no air bubbles present. At all times, the column must be upright. After you have ensured that the silica column is packed uniformly in a compact mode and there are no air bubbles present, transfer some sand to the column so that the silica gel would not be disturbed when we are running the column. Use hexane to rinse down the sand. Look at this. And this is good. The hexane which we collected when we open the stopcock can be used so that, that we don't waste the chemicals. Uh, our sample in this experiment contains chlorophyll and beta-carotene which are dissolved in methylene chloride. So here we are demonstrating liquid loading. Use minimum methylene chloride to dissolve your sample. Use a dropper to transfer the sample into the column. Most of the time, the organic sample is not colored, as shown on the clip on the left. Circulate the dropper as you add into the column. To maximize the yield, wash the beaker with some of your solvent. Open the stopcock for a while. to allow our compound to settle on the silica column under normal pressure. And then add hexane to it. We add more hexane first to rinse down our extracts before we run our column. Keep your eyes on the meniscus of the eluent and never let the column turn dry.
the solvent must always be above the sleeker gel. When you are adding the eluent, do it slowly, not to disturb the layer. After a while, you can pour the rest of the solvent in, and now you can apply the enhanced pressure. See the yellow band. It is moving very swiftly down because it's very non-polar. Once the test tube is full, change and arrange the few test tubes in order of sequence. So now we see the yellow band is eluted. Here we are collecting our first compound in this experiment. For Twittersley, the compound is colored here, so there's no complaints. We collect all those in yellow in the same fraction. In a normal synthesis, what you encounter more often than not is shown on the left, all colorless. So how do you gauge if the first compound has eluted, use your fingers and touch the neck of the stopcock. It will feel warm when the first compound is coming out. At this point, the first compound has successfully been eluted from the column. We will change the eluent to a 1 to 1 hexane to ethyl acetate ratio to increase the polarity so that the more polar compound will interact better and can be eluted. Since the new eluent mix is much more polar, you can see that the solvent dissolves some of the compound. But more eluent. Apply the pressure from the pump and collect the fraction in a new test tube. You will notice that as we increase the polarity of the eluent, the more polar compound runs down swifter. Notice how the green band flows down gradually. I saw the meniscus of the eluent. Never let the column run dry, remember. When the green band is reaching the stopcock, we change the new test tube. You see that the second compound is flowing out and the green liquid containing chlorophyll.
Here we change the eluent quite drastically from pure hexane to a one-to-one -one hexane ethyl acetate system, so the column may see some cracks. Normally we do a gradual increment in the polarity, so these cracks should not be observed. Notice that the exit has no more green liquid. It shows that all the chlorophyll has been eluted. We can change the test tube. We collected the yellow compound of the second test tube, which contains beta-carotene and a green compound in the fourth test tube containing a mixture of chlorophyll A and B. The first and the third test tubes are just solvents. We can verify the identity by conducting a thin layer chromatography. As mentioned before, most organic compounds are colorless, so to check if the test tubes contains the molecule, you have to conduct the TLC. Watch the video on TLC technique to refresh your memory. After you have finished running the column and have collected all your compounds, put the pump back and eject all the solvent inside your silica gel. Dry the column completely. Here you still see some yellow other liquid which may contain other compounds, no? which is not part of our investigation. So you can just discard them. You see that the column is drying out? That's good. Now you're ready to clean the column. Detach the column from the retort stand and bring it to the film hood allocated that has a silica waste disposal. Invert the column and use the rubber tubing to tap on the walls and to eject the silica gels. If the particles inside are too persistent and stubborn to be removed, Rinse it with just a little bit of acetone from the outlet of the column. So voila! <laughs>